The Peace and Liberty Podcast, episode 15. Hey everyone, super thrilled today to be joined by Connor Boyack, who is the creator of the children's book series titled The Tuttle Twins. You may have seen or heard about these books, and I've watched them grow in popularity year after year. And I know my good friend Dan has been reading them to his kids with success. There are children's books such as The Law in reference to Bastiat and Miraculous Pencil in reference to Eye Pencil by Leonard Reed. You even have Creature from Jekyll Island, and I actually have the adult version of that book right behind me as well. And you can see I have the whole set of the Tuttle Twins books displayed behind me. But a little about Connor, he's the president of the Libertas Institute in Utah, and he's the author of several books on politics and religion. He's written hundreds of columns and articles, and his work has been featured on TV, the radio, you name it. He's also the host of the podcast Society in the State, Life, Liberty, and Your Pursuit of Happiness. And you can check that out at societyinthestate.com, and he's on iTunes and Stitcher. But for what we'll be discussing today, you can pick up the Tuttle Twins books at tuttletwins.com shop. And check out the Tuttle Swin site so you can see what he has to offer. But Connor, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate being here. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, for people that don't know, tell us a little about you. How did you get involved with libertarianism? Oh, good question. So for me, it actually started like uh, perhaps with many of us uh, with Ron Paul. I watched a documentary in uh, 2006 called America Freedom to Fascism. I was invited to a screening by a friend. And uh, I was new to a lot of these issues. That documentary features kind of the decline of America from its idealistic founding to where we are today. And there was this gray-haired gentleman in the video who just made a lot of sense. And I wondered, you know, who is this guy? And so Googled him and, you know, from there went down the rabbit hole watching YouTube videos of his speeches and reading books and all sorts of stuff. And from there I went on to all the other kind of modern libertarian thinkers and then the uh, more historic ones. Uh, and so for me, it was more just kind of a side thing. I was actually a web developer for 10, 15 years. And uh, on the side, I was reading a lot. I was blogging uh, back when you know blogging was much more popular than it is today. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that led to writing my first book. And that led to some networking, which led to me starting my own uh, organization. So now Libertas Institute has nine employees. Uh, we're just south of Salt Lake City here in Utah. We've changed uh, several dozen laws uh, with our efforts uh, and we've wow. kind of got a successful strategy that we're going. And and from there, it kind of spilled over into my family life. I've got young children. And a few years ago, uh, I was wanting to kind of educate my children about some of the issues that I care about, the reason that I now work in public policy rather than building websites. So I went on Amazon. You know, I'm trying to find like, okay, well, what books are there that teach property rights or free markets? And there was nothing. And so I was, you know, bummed for a couple of weeks and kind of frustrated, and but then kind of started kicking around the ideas and realizing this could be something that would uh, take off. And so that's how the Tuttle Twins was born. Now, the Tuttle Twins is based off Ethan and Emily. Is that actually your kids' names? No, it's not my kids' names. The, oh. the, the lead characters do have my children's personalities, but we did switch up the names. Because I love the video you did with your kids, uh, you know, promoting the video. That was the cutest video in the world. <laughs> yeah, no, that one, I think we've got two and a half million views now. And, uh, wow. and they love to it. We're actually working on it. We're about to begin working on a second video with them now. So uh, they loved it. And uh, they keep asking for royalties, right? They're like, oh, our video sold all these books. Why aren't we like, you know, getting a piece of that? So we're in negotiations right now. <laughs> hey, I hope you get it. But uh, yeah, I heard you on Tom Woods many times. How many times have you been on the Tom Woods show, by the way? Oh, uh, I don't know. Eight or nine, maybe. He's Really? He's that very, many? I was, yeah. I was trying to compile a list so I can add it to the links. And it's like, man, I just keep finding more and more. I was just going to ask you, like, how many times has it yeah, been? Yeah, <laughs> he, he's been very kind to have me on. I think each time we have a new Tuttle Twins book come out, you know, he uh, has me on the show to help promote it. And I've done some other books and projects that he's had me on for as well. So it's he does a great podcast. It's, it's an excellent one. Yeah, well, for people who don't know, um, you know, referring to Tuttle Twins, if they don't know what it is, I think it was Einstein that said, if you, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. <laughs> so what, what essentially sparked the idea for this? Because believe me, I love the books, but at the same time, starting a children's book series, it's not on everybody's mind. How, how did you end up doing that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So as I said, part of it was born of me wanting to teach my children the things that I care. I just wanted a book like this to exist, right? I, I, I just wanted to go on Amazon and buy it. 
Uh, but that you know wasn't to be, and so with a friend of mine, uh, you know, he actually we actually produced our own version of the law. We have a little pocket-sized version of the law by Bastiat, and he kind of offhandedly uh, mentioned like, "Hey, you know, what if there was this children's version?" And so Elijah, who's our illustrator, I started chatting with him like, "Hey, what do you think? Should we do something like this?" And so the first book was just a, a test. Like we had no idea if it would take off. And, uh, and so we just, we produced the book, we put it out there and the response was overwhelming. So to us, that was a market signal, right? It's like, okay, well, people will, you know, buy these and they're interested in them. And so that's what kind of uh, got us into thinking about a book series rather than initially it was just a single book. That's all we were going to do. It would be this kind of fun little side project, uh, but it took on a life of its own and, and we've been going ever since. You could almost start a, start a homeschool curriculum with all you're doing. I mean, uh, well, I was also going to ask, you give a lot of credit to Elijah Stanfield, um, your co-author who did the illustrations. And the artwork for the book is incredible, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know. It looks really, really good. How did you meet Elijah? And uh, yeah, how did you meet Elijah? <laughs> so, so he, uh, you know, I've known Elijah for several years. And he actually, in the 2012 uh, presidential race, when Ron Paul was running again, Elijah... Uh, worked for the Revolution Pack, which was the Ron Paul Super Pack, and he produced some of the video uh, commercials that they put out. And so Elijah had kind of been in my orbit for a while. Uh, we had a lot of mutual friends. We had kind of uh, chatted a little bit ourselves. You know, we were friends online. Um, and I think the first time we met in person might have been right around uh, 2012. We met at, I believe we met at Freedom Fest in Vegas. Uh, we decided to get a room together. We were there at the conference together. Um, and, uh, and from there, like kind of the synergies and the ideas just kept going. And I fully agree. Like the stories might be mildly interesting on their own with like crappy illustrations or just as text or whatever, but these illustrations, you know, are the reason that these books have sold so well. They've, they've, uh, the, the kids love them. We put Easter eggs in them so you can kind of find these fun little things. And, and it really engages children a lot more than just reading the story itself. So it really helps to kind of keep the child immersed in the story and, and, and learn the ideas. Yeah, that's great. I was reading through them all last night and I was I don't actually have kids yet, but one day when I do have kids, I could imagine the way the way the book reads, it'd be a great children's book. Um, uh, let me see here. So you have seven books in the series, but I want to discuss a few. So The Law, you mentioned that was your first book you came out with. And mm -hmm. if, yep. people, if people didn't catch that, that's based off The Law by Bastiat. And without giving too much away, it's a story about the Tuttle Twins, namely Ethan and Emily, and they wanted to learn something new. So they ended up asking their neighbor, Fred, and Fred gave them a very good lesson, but just quoting from one section of the book, Ethan and Emily locked arms and ran around the room, punching and kicking the air. So the government fights the bad guys, right? Ethan asked. He was imagining government agents in superhero costumes. Then it goes on to say, they stopped punching and kicking. Their draws dropped in disbelief. There are bad guys who are part of the government? How can that be, wondered Emily. Bad guys in government don't wear capes or look like villains, Fred said. They look normal and say things that a lot of people like. Now, this is a brilliant lesson because I, I think about my own conversion to libertarianism, and luckily I came from the right, so I had a few good intuitions, but if you had told me 10 years ago that government is more often than not the enemy of freedom, I probably would have called you crazy. I was brought up to think that government, even when kept minimally, is there to protect you. And even though I was aware of big government, I still thought government was more or less of a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's the case for many people. In fact, you know, every once in a while we'll have a parent pushback who gets the series. You know, they're not libertarian. They don't understand these ideas. Frankly, a lot of our customers are like homeschool families or just parents who they're in some like, you know, a neighborhood group or church group where someone recommends the books. And so they, you know, get them or they see them online. And, uh, and so a lot of our, our readers are not familiar with the original books that we're basing ours on. They're not familiar with these ideas. They just know that they teach important values, right? And that's it. And so then they'll open the book. They'll read an excerpt such as the one that you just read. And they'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, you're, you're trying to teach my kid there are bad guys in government and you're, you're showing a police officer in this kind of dream fictional part of, of the book, like stealing something. No, all police officers are great, right? So there's a lot of, not I shouldn't say a lot, occasionally we do have a reader, a parent push back on us because it, that kind of conflicts with their worldview. Uh, but I would say that is very rare. I think a lot of people are very willing to concede that there are bad apples and we should be aware of, you know, government is not this idealistic, wonderful institution that can do no wrong. It's like there's, there's good and there's bad and you need to be very cautious and be able to understand the nuance. And I mean, you've published this in how many languages so far? 
So um, we're, it's kind of a, an ongoing process. We have, I think, eight languages that we're in right now. I think the first book, the, this one we're talking about is in eight languages. And then the second book, I think we've done like five of those eight languages so far. And then the third book, I think we've done three. So, so we're kind of like ongoing. Uh, you know, English is our priority. That's where like 99.9% .9 of our sales are. But then we're kind of playing catch up and getting into the other languages. And that takes a little bit, uh, a while, especially when our priority for all the artwork and all the writing is putting out more English books. Uh, but, but it's an ongoing uh, and very fun project. We're in all sorts of countries and there's a lot of demand overseas. So it's been a, a ton of fun. That is awesome. Um, well, you have another book titled, and a lot of the books are related to other books written by past thinkers, but you have this one book titled Food Truck Fiasco, and I love this book because uh, it's a bit different than the others. In this book, you actually deal with government regulations on food trucks, so I, I read it just before we went on and loved it, but tell me about that one because we do see with food trucks, they have a, a massive amount of regulations. Yeah, absolutely. So this one uh, is based on or rather incorporates the ideas from a book called Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. And in that book, among other things, he talks a lot about protectionism, right? This idea that the government will step in and favor one industry over another or one business over, you know, competing businesses. And so that's the element that we cho uh, uh, chose to use because you see it with taxis and Airbnb, right? You see it, not Airbnb, ta taxis and Uber, you see it with hotels and Airbnb. You see like all these upstart competitors that have to compete against these entrenched institutions that have all sorts of regulations and even financial incentives that benefit them. And so uh, we chose to do food trucks because that, that's kind of an emerging fun new thing that's caught on uh, quite well in a lot of cities. A lot of people love food trucks. And so we chose to kind of use that as the most modern example of this historic uh, uh, problem that Hazlitt talks about in his book where he's trying to introduce, you know, readers to economics in one lesson is like this, this is an issue since time memorial where, you know, you have people who are benefiting in the status quo wanting to protect their interests and, and ward off competitors. And so rather than competing fairly in the marketplace, they turn to the state and they get the state to intervene on their behalf. And so uh, food trucks just became kind of the imagery that we used for the young readers to understand that, that big idea. Now, I love it how the end of the book you have a list of review questions and you also provide a link to download free workbooks. At this point, like I said, you can almost develop a homeschool curriculum, but um, what gave you the idea to add like review sections and that stuff? Yeah, so that was uh, actually something that one of our readers suggested after we did the first book. And uh, so we started adding that in as well. Um, the workbooks are, are intended to help children continue to be immersed in these ideas. So it's like, hey, you've read the book, now go do a word search where you're going to search for protectionism or search for market or search for these words just to kind of keep them in the, in the minds of the child, right? And so we have all these different age-appropriate activities that they can do, and that's the sole purpose is just to keep them thinking about these words. You know, for the young kids, there's coloring pages. For the older kids, there's like service projects and discussion questions. Uh, there's recipes so you can make some of the, you know, food from the, the, the books because uh, each book has a different little food uh, angle to it. And so we just have all these different ideas to kind of reinforce uh, the concepts that they're learning about in the book. Yeah, I think back to my experience in public school. It's like, why, why do most people not remember much stuff from public school? Well, it's, it's not really a learning environment. It's more of an indoctrination environment. So when, you, sure. talk to, when you talk to people who are, have homeschool kids, they're just much smarter. I, I went to a private school till I was in about fifth grade. And when I got, I remember when I got into my fifth grade new classroom, um, I was the only person there that knew how to write in cursive. I actually, I actually didn't know how to write in print. I was taught to write in cursive, just little things. Um, a difficult word in fifth grade in public school, television. <laughs> and I, 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 remember, I remember I got there and I'm just like, you guys can't spell television? They're just like, oh man, that's a big word. Like, oh my God. What? I mean, you just you saw like an instant difference. So yeah. But I got to say, you aren't only writing children's books because on your site, you have a package people can purchase called the fundraiser pack. And I'm going to read this directly off the site. Eager to earn some money? How about doing it while helping your family, friends, and neighbors learn about liberty? Sign up for the Tuttle Twins fundraiser to earn $4 for every book sold. Here are the details. The cost is $210 for a pack of 35 books, five of each. This works out to $6 per book. You or your child sells them for $10 each, earning $4 a copy. We will pay to ship the books to you. Now, this is absolutely wonderful because you're encouraging parents not only to teach their kids liberty, but to really embrace the lifestyle. Voluntary cooperation in selling books, 
that, that other people want is how we create wealth. So uh, what sparked that idea? I think that's wonderful. When I saw that, I was excited to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, that, that was born of a few different things. One of them was, uh, you know, we had some kid come to our home trying to sell these uh, little coupon packs, right, for their... I don't know if it was for school or scouts or whatever they were involved in. I'm like, oh, hey, little, you know, fundraiser opportunity. That could be clever. And, and you know, my kids wanting to earn money and just all these kind of different ideas swimming around. I'm like, hey, we could offer, you know, the books at a discount and then people could go out and, and profit and, and resell them. And it would be great. Like, you know, rather than selling, you know, popcorn, <laughs> let's sell something, you know, beneficial for the person's, you know, mind and body rather than junk food or whatever. So, um, yeah, we've had a lot of people take advantage. A lot of kids uh, are, are pounding the pavement, right? Going to their neighbors and trying to sell this stuff. And so it's been a lot of fun to see that, uh, you know, I won't say that we have like this massive number participating, but uh, we definitely have at least dozens. And it's fun to kind of hear about some of the stories of them uh, out trying to sell the books to their friends and family. Now, if there were people out there, say that were 25-year-old adults that went to a big college campus that wanted to try to sell this, would they be allowed to do this? Or is this mainly for parents and kids? Or would you? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly intended for kind of kids to go out and do it. But, you know, we do have wholesale re retailers and stores who are, you know, buying at a wholesale discount and then they'll, you know, resell it in their store. And that's something we're very open to. Like, you know, we're on Amazon that does the same thing too. So it's, uh, we're, we're very willing to kind of get the books out there. That's the whole point, right? Is to kind of increase distribution, get a lot of eyeballs on the books. Well, you've definitely made a huge impact, and I'm going to link to everything mentioned in the show notes page. One last thing I wanted to talk about, um, you have a new book. I don't know if it already came out, but it's called Lessons from a Lemonade Stand. Um, tell us about that one. So this one was, um, uh, I, did a, I, I do you know, presentations, speaking at conferences and so forth, and I was invited up to Idaho a couple years ago to speak to a youth group. Um, and there were like you know, 40 or 50 kids there. I gave this presentation on... Um, the government and on uh, you know the nature of the state and uh, our rights and law and all these kind of interrelated concepts and you know just okay that's fun gave a little presentation and, and do some networking whatever but this uh, teenage so this is like teenagers uh, mostly and uh, and some young adults as well and this teenager comes up to me after he's like oh hey that was really good okay yeah yeah thanks you know and uh, he's and he pauses and he says no that was really good you should turn that into a book. And I paused and I'm like, yeah, I should. <laughs> and so he got, like, I wouldn't have thought of it otherwise, but he's like, you know, and the nice thing was, and honestly, anyone who wants to write a book, this is, uh, I haven't heard anyone give this input before, uh, this suggestion. And, and to me, this is, I've seen night and day difference. So I've written 13 books and, uh, and this suggestion more than anything else will accelerate your writing and help you to have a good book that flows from beginning to end. And that is, don't start by creating a, a template and your structure or, or laying out your ideas. Instead, give a presentation because that's a much smaller goal. Uh, it's you know fewer people. You gather some people together, do a little town hall type meeting, whatever it is. But if you're doing a presentation, uh, you're kind of creating your PowerPoint slides, right? And you're kind of flowing the ideas from one slide to the next. And maybe you have some bullet points where you break out the ideas. And, and what I found in doing this presentation and turning it into Lessons from Lemonade Stand, the book, is that when you already have the presentation done, you already have the structure. You haven't thought about it in the context of writing a book. You've just been trying to have a good presentation for 45 minutes. And so when you take that structure and then just expound on it and fill it in with stories and examples and whatever, it becomes much easier to write the book. So the book was actually very easy to write because I'd already done you know, a lot of the work, a lot of the thinking uh, for that presentation. This book, though, is intentionally shorter. It's I, I don't know if you have it or I don't have it right here, but it's like 150 pages maybe. It's uh, written in a much more informal style than I typically do for uh, my adult you know, general market books because it's definitely meant to be accessible to teenagers and to young adults um, who aren't familiar with a lot of these ideas. And so we speak to them a little bit more simply. And the idea is to give them kind of the expose of what government is, what rights are, what law is, um, so that they can kind of understand the real world in a real way and not in this fictitious social studies, you know, history textbook, mythical kind of way. Um, and so we just came out with that one, I think like six months ago or something like that. And, uh, and this audience is definitely kind of the sweet spot between adults and between kids. We've got kind of all these teens and young adults that we don't produce a lot of content for in our movement. And so this is kind of uh, geared just towards them. Well, again, we really appreciate everything you do. You've probably helped hundreds of thousands of people by now uh, help raise their kids. 
So I'm going to link to everything mentioned in the show notes page. And seriously, if, if you have kids, buy these books. If you know someone who has kids, buy these books. If you want to be an entrepreneur and make some money, buy the fundraiser pack. Uh, but well, Connor, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on and surely it won't be the last time. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I love your backdrop there. I love to see uh, the, the books being spread around and people picking them up. So thank you again. Oh, they're absolutely wonderful. People are going to love them. Well, everybody, I finally got my website up and running and you can check it out at forpeaceandliberty.com. And it's not perfect yet, but you can still access the episodes easily. And I'll be adding new stuff all the time from here on out. Looking back to my first few episodes, you're going to notice some major improvements. Well, we'll do it all again next week. Hey everyone, please like, follow, donate, subscribe, and share. Any donations will be used to reach more people.